What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about one trade that I made today on the 6th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs and digging deeper into these marijuana stocks. So for all you guys out there that didn't see my video from earlier today, I actually uploaded a video this morning giving my you know more of an in-depth perspective technical analysis on the three marijuana stocks that have gone absolutely insane in the year of 2019 those three being cgc cron and acb so for those of you guys that are interested go check that video out i pretty much talked about how i thought we were going to pull back in these marijuana stocks and what happened today guys we pulled back so we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes but before we do for all you guys that do enjoy the content that i produce here on youtube if you find value in the content, feel free to go down below, smash that like button. It really does help my channel grow and it just supports me and the movement that we're creating here in general, guys. And I do appreciate all you guys that do watch the, these videos, watch my channel every single day, subscribe, and of course, smash that like button. It really does mean a lot to me. So today, guys, you know, overall, in terms of the three major indices, it wasn't too crazy of a day, right? We see the SPX here. It closed down about 0.2%, down about $6, kind of a meh day, right, in terms of the SPX. Nothing crazy there. The Dow Jones literally down about 0.08%, so down less than 0.1% on the day, down around $21 here. And the NASDAQ, guys, down around $12 down around 0.18%. So today was nothing more than just a brief consolidation day, a slight red day in the overall stock market, meaning that, you know, a lot of the stocks didn't do too much today, right? We see Apple close at around plus $6 or six cents rather. I wish it was $6. That would have been great. But Facebook here was down around 67 cents, not much movement at all. We see Amazon down around $18. That was quite a big move, a decent move there, down around 1%. But, you know, overall, some of the bigger names, you know, not much movement overall today in the markets. And you saw in the title today, the SPX or the S&P 500, is it at a resistance? We're going to talk about that in this video. So let's start off with the SPX, guys. Like I said, you know, down about $6 today, down around 2.2%. And what I want to talk about, like you saw in the title, is whether or not we're at a resistance, right? I was looking at some earlier or some longer term charts, rather, in yesterday's video on the major indices, the Dow, the SPX, and the NASDAQ. And we were able to identify this resistance resistance here on the SPX on the one year one day chart um, you know, in specific here. And this resistance, guys, is under the 180 simple moving average. And this has been a resistance over the past. We can see it got rejected here at around, what was this, 2770 back in, uh, you know, the end of November. We were overbought. Well, not really overbought at this, at this point. We can see we're actually even more overbought at the point we are right now. And we're under that resistance. And we see a death cross in the S. SPX here, meaning that the 50 SMA broke below the 180 SMA. And this is a sign that, guys, you know, I could see us getting rejected here under this 180 SMA. And another thing I want to talk about, guys, is we're seeing a red candlestick start to form right under that 180 SMA. So this is a good sign. The fact that, A, we see a death cross here on the one year one day, meaning again, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. And for all you guys that don't know what that means, it pretty much means that this is a sign that we might see some downside in the future. Is it 100% a sign of a bear market coming? No, right? It just shows us that the movement in the price could be heading down in the next coming weeks. This is a pretty good sign. We also have the fact that we are right under the resistance right here. We're having a red candlestick forming towards the end of the day. Third thing is that the RSI is extremely overbought, right? We talked about this in a lot of the time frames right now in the SPX and the major indices. The RSI is showing that these indices are overbought, 
I mean, we see that right here with the level being at around 67. So those are a couple of different um, indicators right now that are telling me that we could potentially pull back. So, you know, that's what I'm looking at here on the larger term charts, guys. Tomorrow is going to be a very big day, um, you know, deciding whether or not we're heading back down a bit here. Or, you know, if we do end up having a strong green day tomorrow, let's say we push up 20, 25 points, you know, we could end up breaking this 180 SMA resistance which would be a good sign that the uptrend is continuing. Just keep an eye, guys. You know, <clears throat> I personally think if we have a strong red day tomorrow, that's going to solidify that rejection, you know, on this one-year, one-day chart. And if we're taking a look here on the 20-day, one-hour chart for the SPX, it's looking like, like I said today, guys, obviously we had a flat day. So over the past two days, it's looking like we're having some consolidation in the overall SPX. So this is a good sign sign that we're going to probably pull back tomorrow a little bit more or we're going to end up popping up even higher here if we do a move similar to what happened a couple days back right we can see a couple days back we had a very similar scenario here we saw two consolidation days two flat days pretty much right well actually this is not really technically a flat day because um, we did pop early on in the day on this particular day, but pretty much, you know, three quarters of that day was flat and it headed into the next day. So you could really consider that, you know, a day and a half of consolidation. And then after that, we ended up popping up, right? So this could be a very similar scenario, but tomorrow, just keep an eye on the 2740 level, whether or not we're going to break above that, or we're going to get rejected by it and start to head down to that 50 SMA support. And of course, if we do break that, guys that's going to indicate that we're breaking or rather getting rejected by the resistance on that longer term chart that I showed you guys. And that's going to be a good sign that we're heading back down on the smaller term charts um, as well. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the SPX, guys. It does seem like we're at a resistance, but we have to see the solidified rejection, which is going to come later on this week. Or if we break above, guys, if we break above that resistance, that's just going to be a continuation of an uptrend and uh you know that could signal more green to come to be completely honest with you guys but um on a technical perspective that is but um Let's take a look here at the Dow Jones, guys. You know, nothing much to talk about since today. Really just was a flat day. We can see, you know, it's it's overbought here on the 184-hour chart. It's screaming pullback based on this chart, honestly, and the fact that it is RSI uh, overbought right now. And in terms of the 20-day, one-hour chart, you know, very similar to the SPX, guys. Pretty much two days in a row of consolidation at this point, right? And this is indicating either we're going to pop up here or we're going to end up pulling back and testing that 50 SMA again as a potential uh, support, right? So, you know, again, just like the last couple of days, right, these indices are at very interesting spots right now. We could potentially expect a big move to the downside, let's say, if these tech stocks start to sell off, if the SPX does get rejected by that resistance. And let's say, you know, in a couple of weeks, guys, you know, the March 1st deadline for the trade war agreement is creeping up, right? Don't forget about that. That's in about two, three, actually more like three, four weeks at this point. So keep an eye on that. You know, if we don't come to an agreement, you know, the markets, this could send the markets into more selling, even more panicky modes like we saw back in, uh, you know, December. So a lot of things are coming up here. We're overbought. A lot of stocks are, are overextended. A lot of the large cap stocks. And if these start to sell off, guys, if short term money starts to come out, you know, this these indices are going to start to sell off pretty hard in my personal opinion and uh you know the technicals do support it right a lot of the times you know when we're straight up green like this over an extended period of time like a month a month and a half like we have been you know we kind of forget what it's like to have that strong red day until it comes and it hits us like a train right it's going to come one of these days where we check our phones in the morning and the spx futures are down two percent dow's down two percent it's going to happen one of these days guys i'm just letting you know remember this part of the video it's going to end up happening but that the, the question is when and of course the more and more we push up you know the more overbought we get 
the likelihood of it happening becomes greater and greater, guys. So just keep that in mind. The NASDAQ futures today, you know, like I said earlier, they're down about $12 at the close, down around 0.17%. And we're trading in this channel, like I talked about in yesterday's video and the couple of videos before this, right? We traded in this channel in the NASDAQ. We ended up breaking that 6,800 resistance. We're trading in this new channel now from around 6,900 up to around 7,100. Drip. And just like the other indices, guys, the past two days roughly have been straight up consolidation, right? We can see, you know, pretty much all of the day yesterday and today was consolidation for the NASDAQ. So keep an eye, let's say on the $7,000 level, are we going to break out of that and continue this uptrend? Or are we going to get rejected and potentially sell off back into the 6,900 range right now for the NASDAQ? So again, guys, you know, there is potential right now since we are seeing a bit of overbought sentiment here. We are seeing some red candlesticks start to form. You know, we could end up selling back down to the 6,900 level, putting us back at this previous resistance, which of course is now a new support. So keep an eye on all of those levels, guys. And let's talk about the marijuana stocks very quickly right now before I talk about what I traded so we can quickly, you know, recap what ended up happening today. So again, I recorded a video this morning talking about these, whether or not they're going to experience a pullback, what my thoughts were, and I did a technical breakdown. So again, check out that video. If you guys haven't yet, it's the previous one before this, but let's take a look at what ended up happening today, guys. So of course, for all you that don't know, Cron is a marijuana stock. It's been up 140% since the start of 2019 from around $10 all the way up to around $25. It was getting extremely overbought. Same exact thing with CGC here and another one which is called Aurora, right? Aurora, ACB, right? This is another one that was very overbought, but on a technical perspective, this one's looking a bit better now, but we're going to talk about this one at the end. But let's take a look at Cron, right? It got extremely overbought at around $25 here, and now we saw finally the big pullback that we needed. It came today. Actually, we need a lot more for it to pull back to a level where I'd consider buying and adding a position in, which is around $14, $15. But the fact that we started the pullback, right, that 10% big pullback today, you know, this could be the beginning of that pullback back down to the previous resistance, right around 14 to 15, 13, 15 dollars. This is where I think we could end up selling off and could potentially be a good buying zone for Cron. But anyway, guys, you know, on this 20 day chart, what I was looking at this morning was whether or not actually we already broke it this morning, but I wanted to see whether or not we were going to hold under this 50 SMA. And of course, the EMA crossed below the 50 SMA, which does signal, um, you know, downside, a bearish move, you know, on the smaller term charts here. The EMA is the quickest acting moving average. And if this one breaks below the 50 SMA, which is a slower moving average than the EMA, right? That signals bearish uh, you know, sentiment, right? And the next support that I'm keeping an eye on here is this 180 SMA on Cron. So this is the sell-off, guys, the beginning of the sell-off that we've been wanting to see in Cron. Same exact thing here on CGC. We were talking about this double top formation here on the 20-day one-hour chart at around $51, $52. We ended up breaking that 180 SMA today, guys, and it's acting as a resistance. So this could, on CGC, just like Cron, be, excuse <clears throat> excuse me, the beginning of, um, you know, the sell-off that we need. And of course, we broke below the 50 SMA here, which is a very good sign that the next spot we're heading to could be roughly around this next support at around $42, $43. So keep an eye on that. But overall, guys, you know, on CGC, you know, the level that I would like to see it pull back to would be around $31, $32, because this is where it pulled back to. Actually, it pulled back to $25, but I could see it pulling back anywhere between $25 and $30, because this is the level it pulled back to from around $59, back a couple of months ago, back in October, actually, all the way down to, you know, that level, right? And we can see how quick it sells off. This can very well happen in the next two weeks, guys. And if you played puts on this, you know, let's say you bought a put option here or something, right? A strike price around here, and you ended up riding it all the way down. Well, 
you would make a ridiculous amount of money, right? So this is something that could happen here again. You know, if you play a put short term, two, three week put, whatever you want to do, you know, that could end up happening. And I'm personally looking at doing this uh, pretty heavily in these next couple of weeks. If there's more downside tomorrow and the next day that we see, you know, from these stocks. So another one, ACB guys, not as bad of a pullback it's still technically holding this uh trend line here it's down around four percent today and honestly guys if it breaks this trend line and the 50 sma here on the 20 or actually the 184 hour chart that's going to be a good reversal pattern to the downside but out of the three major ones we just talked about guys this one is looking the best on a technical perspective for more upside to come if that makes any sense guys and drop a comment down below what are your thoughts on the marijuana stocks i would love to hear what you guys have to think about these and honestly i just love talking to you guys in the comments so drop a comment down below and let me know what you think so another stock or etf rather that i talked about in this morning's video is the one that I ended up trading and that one was JDST right and I talked about the gold futures today being at a very very critical point and we saw that they ended up breaking that or the support rather that we were talking about in the video this morning right so let me talk about that very quickly for those of you guys that did not watch that video and we can see it here on the 20 day one hour what i was talking about i was talking about this channel that gold was trading in between 1315 to around 1320 i was saying in the video if we broke to the upside that would be a good opportunity for JNUG, right? A good opportunity for the bull ETF for play, right? Whether a day trade, a couple day swing trade, whatever. But if we broke under, under this 180 SMA and under this support of this channel, which ended up happening, right? That would have been a good opportunity, a good play for JDST, which is what I ended up trading, guys. And to be honest with you all today, um, you know, in the morning, and, you know, pretty much for the first couple of hours, there was very, very slow movement for me, right? The markets were kind of boring. It honestly started to look like a day where I wasn't going to trade at all. But the beauty of alerts, guys, I put an alert on the gold futures to alert me if they were to break under this uh, spot. So at the time that, you know, honestly, they alerted me, I had already closed my computer. I was like, I'm not trading today. Um, you know, I'm not really seeing any setups that I like. But once this one started to open up, guys, it broke under there. I, I turned on my laptop. I went to JDST and it was literally doing exactly what I was talking about in this morning's video and i do believe it started to push up at around 12 o'clock eastern standard yeah it was actually more towards the end of 12 o'clock so around one o'clock is when it started to push up and this is when i started to take interest in it when we saw the 50 or we saw the ema break above the 50 sma which is a very bullish sign on a small term chart here on the one day one minute and of course the 50 sma broke above the 180 SMA, and then again, we saw the EMA break above the 180 SMA, all bullish signals here. And then I pretty much wrote it up from around $39.04. I waited a little bit. I wanted to see if it was going to continue this uptrend. I wanted to see if it was going to hold this 50 as a support. And then I wanted to see if it was going to break this previous resistance just to be safe on an initial position. It ended up doing that, guys. Ended up scaling in a bit here. Added a bit more at around $39, and I'd say about... Uh, 15 cents here and then I ended up holding the shares there because I didn't want to add more to the top here because at this point guys if you're thinking about it you know in live action right at this point in time we're a bit overbought right this wouldn't be a great opportunity to hop in rather I wanted to wait for a pullback but we can see you know I want at this point is what I'm trying to say I wanted to wait for a pullback before adding more but since we were not getting that pullback we kept running up right? I pretty much just took my profits, um, you know, and did not wait for that, uh, you know, other entry because we never really ended up getting it. We already hit my profit target and I ended up taking about 1.5% on this trade guys from around 39.13 average cost up around 1.5%. I actually ended up trading it or selling it off at around 37 or rather, rather $39.70. So that's the one trade I ended up making today, guys, and the power of alerts 
really helped me today, you know, make this trade in JDST. So that's what I ended up doing today. Again, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. I would love to know. And I actually had a request in the group chat for my buddy Sebastian uh, about ticker symbol BA and Boeing, whether or not I forget the question. I think he wanted me to do an analysis on uh, Boeing. Someone else is talking about call options on Boeing, which would be, um, in my opinion right now, I would not place a call option on Boeing because we're already at, I think it was the 52-week high on Boeing. Yup, we we're already at the 52-week high, and we're overbought, extremely overbought, in every single time frame pretty much, right? Meaning the RSI is very overbought, we're at the 52-week high, and this could be a point in time, guys. If the markets were to sell off, you know, Boeing is going to sell off as well. It's just inevitable, right? You know, unless it's one of those stocks that really just doesn't sell off like Tesla was a couple of months back when it was roaring in the 350s while all the other stocks were getting pummeled, um, which I don't think would happen because last time we saw, you know, the markets were selling off. Boeing was selling off strong. So, you know, if we do end up selling off again in the next couple of weeks, guys, you know, a call option, you would not really do well on it, especially with as high, uh, you know, of this price, um, you know, that we are right now in terms of Boeing. You know, if anything, guys, honestly, I would be waiting for a potential put option on a lot of these stocks, right? Like Boeing, Apple, Facebook. I've been talking about this. Once we do get, you know, a confirmation of the pullback in the overall markets, which we saw, you know, the SPX is at a resistance earlier on in this video, right? So, you know, on a technical perspective right now, this is screaming pullback to me, right? Unless we do get... Um, you know, unless we do see something like this happen again, which was a very big uh, bull flag here a couple of weeks back. And by that, I mean, you know, if we were to pull back back down, let's say $400, consolidate there and start to push back up, you know, that could be something that may happen in the short term, right? But, you know, I personally think we're going to end up maybe popping back up to 415, 420, hover for there a little bit, and then slowly start to sell off. That's just my personal opinion. You know, I really wouldn't hop into a swing trade right now in Boeing unless I was already in it from the 350s, 360s, 370s, 380s. You know, I would consider taking profits if I was in from, you know, that price point. But, you know, anything in the 400s right now, buying and holding is pretty risky, in my opinion, um, you know, in terms of Boeing, right? So we saw, you know, other than, other than that, guys, you know, we saw the gold move today. Very solid move there. Not much move, uh, not much movement in terms of uh, the natural gas futures lately, guys. If anything, it's looking like they're curling back down and potentially selling off even more. So in that situation, guys, you know, keep an eye on around the 265 level for natural gas. If we start to sell off back into that range, you know, this could be a good opportunity to hop into DGAS and potentially trade this one. Although it is a bit overbought, you know, the RSI does make it seem like we're on a bit of a pullback. We had some consolidation days. And since, um, you know, natural gas is slowly starting to sell off again, curl back down, you know, that could open up a nice pushback up, you know, for DGAS. But of course, if we start to see some push to the upside, you know, we're going to see a good opportunity in UGAS. So another one that I wanted to talk about today was EA. EA is, of course, you know, we know the gaming company, right? This one ended up selling off 17% yesterday after market hours. Activision Blizzard was down around like I think it was down around like 8% today at the low of the day or something like that. These video game companies got pretty much slaughtered, right? And we saw, you know, this one opened up a pretty solid trade if you were able to trade today pre-market hours from this low at the 17% drop to $74, we were able to get back up to $80. And this is a great example of what I was talking about with Sony a couple days ago, right? We talked about Sony, ticker symbol SNE, it dropped pretty heavily after market hours, uh, you know, due to earnings report. And I was waiting for a potential play in Sony the next day. I never got it, but this is an opportunity of 
an EA of EA doing what I wanted Sony to do a couple of days ago, right? Meaning that it sold off due to an earnings report, right? Bad earnings report. I didn't take a look too deep into it. I don't really know what happened, but you know, I'm guessing it was the earnings report. It sold off. And then it ended up climbing back up and started to fill and filled a little bit of that gap back up to $92. I know it was a small gap of around $6, but that's an opportunity where short-term traders, day traders are able to come in and make some money. And this is something that you do a lot during earnings reports, or I try to do a lot during earnings reports. When I see a stock tank after earnings, it happens a lot, guys, especially during earnings season, obviously, right? Um, you know, I like to watch the stocks and see whether or not they're going to find support and slowly start to fill the gap back up. And of course, we do see them sometimes, you know, continue to sell off. And those are obviously ones that you wouldn't want to pay attention to, right? So let me just show you Sony very quickly now that we're on that topic, right? So we saw, wow, this one dumped even more today. So yeah, this is one that you would want to not trade, right? We saw the dump here. I was looking to trade it, I believe, either this or this day. Never got the big pop up, right? And now we saw it dumped even more. So this is one that I'm not even going to be looking at. But, you know, overall, guys, what I'm looking to trade over these next couple of days is really just the continuation of this trend in gold. If we continue to downtrend, JDST, potentially JNUG if we find support and continue to the upside. Put options on the marijuana stocks, TVIX, if we do end up getting rejected tomorrow and we have a strong red day in the market, TVIX could end up being a great play, which is an ETF that goes up whenever the SPX sells off. So keep an eye on this ETF as well as SQQQ. These are two that I do see potential in if we do have a red day tomorrow, which is pretty likely, guys, because with these technicals that we're seeing, in my opinion, they're screaming pullback and we're setting ourselves up for a pullback, you know, with two days or one and a half days, whatever it ends up, uh, whatever ended up being of consolidation. So, you know, that's what I'm pretty much watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great day. Great night. Peace out.